Hello and uh, welcome to the next part of our A to Z of the NHS series. Today we're going to be dealing with the letter B and conditions and problems that might be associated with it that yourselves at home might like to know a little bit more about. Now, we've taken a lot of feedback from yourselves about where to go with this um, series after we had one very large video to start off with. We thought about continuing with the large videos, but by sheer chance, this first one has ended up much longer than we'd expected it to. So we're going to try and do individual um, sections, but hopefully give you an overall much more fulfilling experience than trying to cram everything into a tighter time frame. I'm joined again by Dr. Andy Stein, and we're going to go through the Bs. Andy, what, what, what have you brought us today? We've got four Bs today. Um... Three of them are very common and very important, and they are blood pressure, breast cancer, BMI, which is a surrogate for obesity, and your favourite condition, B12 deficiency. Absolutely. OK, that sounds good. So we've got quite a broad range. We've got, you know, the surgery, the medicine, the lifestyle things. So I think we'll hopefully get a lot out of that. So let's start off with blood pressure then. And we need to remember that it's a range. So we've got all the way on the low end of the spectrum where someone might be falling over and feeling lightheaded. But then we've got the much larger, that silent killer, the high blood pressure. Andy, you deal with a lot of that with the kidneys, don't you? I do, and maybe that's why blood pressure is important to me, because in kidney disease, it's staggeringly important. In fact, it's one of the few things we can do to really help all patients with kidney diseases. But today, I not, don't particularly want to talk about kidney disease. I want to talk about high blood pressure in general, as we call it, hypertension. So, first of all, what is blood pressure? The blood pressure is basically the pressure inside the blood vessels, particularly the arteries. And if it's unusually high, we call this hypertension or, or high blood pressure. That's the doctor's phrase for it, hypertension. Um, it is also a biomedical variable, and that's a fancy doctor's term for something that you're born with. It is a feature of you, a bit like your height. So let's bring it down to basics then. So blood pressure's got two numbers. You know, there's the top number and the bottom number. What, what's all that about? So the top number, which is called the systolic, relates to the contraction of the heart, and the lower number, the diastolic, relates to the relaxation of the heart. And that's why there are two numbers. And a normal human blood pressure is approximately 130 over 80. So the systolic number is 130, and the diastolic number is 80. Now, that's normal for most people in middle life most of the time. But in fact, blood pressure changes through your life. And in fact, a young chap like yourself might have a normal blood pressure of 120 over 70. And the rest, I'm at 110 over 60 this morning. That's excellent, James. <laughs> well done. Somebody slightly older than yourself, such as myself, uh, a normal blood pressure could be 130 over 80, and an older person, it could be 140 over 90. So the two numbers go up through life, and also the spread of the numbers, which what we call the pulse pressure, also increases through life. There are a variety of things that affect the blood pressure, apart from your age. Your gender, men tend to have higher blood pressure and are more prone to hypertension and also race. Black and Asian people have more problems with their blood pressure and are more likely to get hypertension. Black people in particular are very prone to severe hypertension. I'll talk more about that later. It matters because, as you say, it's a silent killer. Doctors don't like silent killers. We like diseases which we can see or feel or touch and we can diagnose. We don't like things we can't see, we can't feel. It's important also because if you don't spot it, it can lead to some really unpleasant things. So heart attacks and strokes, we don't want those. Kidney failure, my error, we don't want kidney failure. Blindness also, we don't want that. And there's increasing evidence it's associated with dementia as well. The way I've always thought about it, having a high blood pressure, is like driving around with your car in third gear. It's not a major issue now, but over time it puts increased wear on your engine, or in this case, our bodies, putting at risk of that big list, that colossal list of horrifying diseases that Andy's just mentioned. It's staggeringly common, staggeringly common. And in fact, 25% of the adult population have hypertension. But when you look at the older age groups, it's even more of a problem. 
about 60% of 60 year olds and 70% of 70 year olds will have hypertension. So this is a big problem with the elderly. And many of you out there will have hypertension or you have a relative or a parent with it. It's a big problem in our society. Um, what I'd like to do now is tell you a little story about high blood pressure. Go on then. Uh, I would stress that this is unusual but it did happen to me. So about 20 years ago, long ago, I was a registrar, that means a middle grade doctor in Leicester. And one night, it's always at night, a late middle aged lady came in unconscious. Now normally being unconscious wouldn't lead you to a kidney doctor, but the doctors in the emergency department spotted that this lady's blood pressure was incredibly high. In fact, it was 280 over 190, one of the highest blood pressures I've ever seen. So 280 systolic? Yes, yes. Okay, to put that into perspective for everyone at home, a blood pressure of 280 systolic, if we were to talk about speed limits, that somebody is doing 280 in a 30 mile an hour zone. I've never heard of a blood pressure that high, and that to me as a doctor, if I saw a patient like that, I would be sending them up to the A&E department straight away. That's frightening to me. Well, that's exactly what happened, um, and she was admitted via the emergency department. Um, she ended up on the kidney ward, and the thing that was obvious about her, well, in fact, there were two things. One, she was unconscious, which is unusual, so you immediately think of brain hemorrhages and head injuries and things like that. But secondly, she had some very strange fingers and some very strange marks around her mouth. And I thought she might have a very rare disease that can affect the kidneys called scleroderma. Now, I would stress that this is a very rare cause of high blood pressure. So I rang up my boss late at night. Uh, he was a bit grumpy, I think, because I'd woken him up uh, and I said, what should we do? She's unconscious, she's got very high blood pressure, she's in kidney failure. And he said, Andy, it's obvious, dialyzer. Um, it wasn't obvious to me. Um, I thought we should focus on the blood pressure. And in fact, we did both. We focused on the blood pressure with some strong drugs and we put this lady on dialysis. And this is, this is where having that senior review, being able to call the big dog in the middle of the night comes in. Because as Andy was saying that, I was running through, right, what medications am I going to use? How would I bring that down? Gosh, that's a difficult one to deal with. The concept of dialyzing that lady, giving her replacement renal therapy, connecting up to a machine to act as a kidney for her, didn't actually come into my head then. So the story went on. Uh, the following morning, she was slightly better and starting uh, to speak to us. And incredibly, three days later, she was sitting up in bed normal, with normal blood pressure. Her kidneys were improving. And in fact, we weaned her off dialysis. A week or so later, her blood pressure was normal. Her kidneys were nearly normal and we were able to discharge her. Um, she was a very nice lady, and one of the things I remember about her was asking her whether she had had her blood pressure taken in the years coming up to this incident, and sadly, she hadn't. She had been told five or more years ago by her GP that her blood pressure was up and she should have it checked regularly, but she decided not to, which she now regrets, and I'm sure you as a GP see, see this situation all the time. And I think that's a good thing to point there from my side of things about trying to prevent people falling into the river in the first place. Um, everyone's got a thermometer at home, but I would argue that once you're no longer a child, everybody should have a blood pressure monitor at home because it's useful just to check to understand what is normal for you. Because even somebody my age, I'm lucky I don't, I've got a good blood pressure. However, I have friends that I was at university with, you know, 35 years of age, who are on blood pressure treatment. So it's a silent killer. There's no way that you would know, unless you got a horrifically high blood pressure, that something was wrong. So blood pressure monitor, really good thing to think about investing in. I think that's uh, a very good point, and I think we should move now on to the treatment of hypertension, and more particularly what, what you, the watcher, the reader, the listener can do to help yourself, because there are things that you can do. And the first thing is, as you say, to buy a blood pressure machine. Um, there is a thing called the British Hypertension Society 
that recommends certain blood pressure machines. In other words, there are approved ones uh, and, and ones that are not approved. It doesn't really matter. Just get a good one and start taking your blood pressure. And in fact, my recommendation is over the age of 30, almost everybody should check their blood pressure at least once a year. Um, and it's more important that men check their own blood pressure because women get pregnant and then have their blood pressure measured. So we're the ones that slip through the net. We're the ones that are most vulnerable to hypertension being a silent killer. Okay, so you've done that. You've bought yourself a machine. You discover that you've got a problem or you go to your family doctor for another problem. They measure your blood pressure and it's up. What happens next? I suppose part of that's going to depend on the patient's age, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and if the blood pressure wasn't that high and you were young, perhaps your family doctor, such as yourself, would recommend diet, uh, weight loss, reduce salt in your diet, etc., etc., and give that a go for three months and see if the blood pressure came down. And from my side of things, that's, I'm an interventionist. I want to do things. I want to help my patients. And it sounds just like saying, you know, cut out salt and change your diet. It sounds like actually I'm not doing anything. But part of my interventional nature is also to help people help themselves. And in the same way that high blood pressure is a silent killer and it develops over time, if you're monitoring your blood pressure at home, you have the ability to have a huge impact on it and hopefully mean that I get an easier job and I don't have to get out my medicine box. But for many people, uh, you do have to get your medicine box out now, I'm afraid. Um, fortunately, there's a whole range of drugs. We haven't got time to go through them today, but there are old-fashioned drugs called beta blockers, for example. There's a more modern group called ACE inhibitors. There are lots of drugs out there with relatively few side effects that can be used. And if your family doctor starts you on a blood pressure tablet, it needs long-term follow-up. It's not just a matter of starting a tablet, goodbye, thank you very much. Your blood pressure needs to be monitored. Um, ideally, you can do that for yourself. If you don't want to or you can't, you can go to your family doctor um, or some pharmacists have blood pressure machines now. And I'd recommend blood pressure being taken at least every three months or so. If it's persistently above 140 over 90, you may want to go to monthly measurements and then even weekly measurements. I think Andy's made a really good point there, that this isn't far and forget. As an interventionist, I'll you know, give whatever treatments that I need, but I also want to take treatments off. There's a huge amount that people can do to promote, look after and enhance their own health. And if somebody, for example, they had high blood pressure because they're eating badly, they've got you know, a high weight and they're not doing an awful lot of exercise, if we move those things around, there's every chance that their blood pressure will come back to normal and then we can take those medications off. Very much it's a two-way street. As doctors, we work hard, but if the patients work hard, then we can change what we're doing and we move the management plan to benefit yourselves. One thing I would like to mention at this point is a subset of patients that have particular problems with blood pressure, and that subset is black people. Black people have a particular problem with blood pressure in that they're more likely to get it, and when they get it, it's more severe. Also, when they have a problem, different tablets are more effective for them. And I think if a GP is having problems controlling blood pressure in a black person, they should have a very low threshold for referring the patient either to a, a specialist blood pressure clinic, and we have one of those in Coventry, um, or somebody like myself. One last thing I'd like to talk about is the kidneys and high blood pressure. As I said earlier, high blood pressure causes kidney problems and kidney problems can also cause high blood pressure, so it works both ways. So most of my patients with kidney problems will have high blood pressure. But even if you don't have a kidney problem, in my opinion, after the age of 30, it would be a good idea to have a kidney blood test as part of a screen, including diabetes and cholesterol, at least once a year, and especially if you have high blood pressure. So my near final message is, over the age of 30, have both a kidney blood test, a test for glucose and for cholesterol, as well as having your blood pressure measured at least once a year, and that's particularly important if you're a man. Well, 
I think that pretty much wraps that up. So, thanks Andy for giving us that overview on blood pressure. To reiterate, blood pressure is that silent killer that can affect you across your entire lifespan. And that's why it's important that at any age, if you have a raised blood pressure, that we get on top of that with diet, with medications, and home monitoring, as well as the input from your GP. So, blood pressure's out of the way. Join us for the next video, which will be dealing with the breast and problems with breast cancer. Um, if you've enjoyed this and it's been useful to yourself, please uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.